welcome to the New Year's Man Cave, January the 1st, 2024, and it's just a quick one, well, no, it won't be a quick one at all, I know it's not going to be a quick one, I'll make it as short as I can, just a local run, first run of 24, on, uh, on Daisy. Psycho outfit. She doesn't get used enough, so give her a run out. Just a local run round the lanes, round the villages, local to where I live, and a little bit more about my history, my past, if you like, in a previous <laughs> previous life, a previous job. But um, main reason for this is to is to say thank you to my my subscribers um 742 now <laughs> um a big thank you for your support over the last year and um hopefully your continuing support hopefully i don't want to take too much for granted. have you seen me hat <laughs> novelty christmas present this was of my daughter um and it's because a couple of years ago i actually drove a steam engine Yes, Stephen. <laughs> Norfolk Thunderbolt. Um, it's great, great to watch it, Stephen. Um, it, we have an, an interest, we have a common interest in railways, really. It's a, a bit of a side interest for me, but yeah, I uh, I had the opportunity to drive the, one of the little steam engines at, in the park, P-Zone Park at uh, the Scarborough. Uh, the driver He's, he, he could see me showing interest and he said jump on board jump on the foot plate and he, he said do you, do you want to have a go at driving it and i said okay yeah i love it i mean that's a dream come true for me so yes engine driver <laughs> anyway let's go and see what the lanes are like it was um, it's it's a nice morning so see how it goes cheers well good morning it's Monday the 1st of January 2024 the Sun is shining we've got blue sky perfect conditions for the first ride of the year and this time we're on Daisy my T100 sidecar outfit and we're just gonna just a short one just a little round the block sort of thing but it's a very pretty block now just up to the left, I shan't concentrate too much on it because it's a private residence now, but the little bit on the end of the house next door, that was my police station. That was my base for 16 years. And I suppose, <laughs> in a way, it sounds arrogant, but from here, I was lord of all I surveyed. Well, for the eight hours I was on duty anyway. Um, the village of Warslow is on the rim of the Manifold Valley, a very pretty limestone valley that we've covered before I know so many times but it just is so nice today to be honest. Now I'm out on Daisy because well over the last couple of years I've had a couple of electrical woes and uh, And the last time we sorted it out, my um, my favourite mechanic, Danny Pritchard in Leek, good fella, he suggested that I need to make more use of the bike because it was part of the reason that it's been parked up for so many so long a period, you know. So I forsaken Blizzard, the Himalayan, this morning. I do enjoy riding the outfit, even though I'm not going to passenger it at the minute. It's you know, it's nice. So yes, for 16 years, I, I, I don't want to go on too much about, well, I'm <laughs> going to, it's as simple as that about, about my life, my job up here. It was a different sort of a job. I mean, look at this. We're looking across the Manifold Valley, the upper Manifold Valley now, across to 
the hill over on the left there is Sheen Hill overlooking the village of Sheen we've ridden through there I know I've covered it but it's just such a nice morning you know um, the Manifold Valley was the source of all sorts of different um, jobs work if you like for me of all different sorts be it um, farm animal orientated even crime orientated a lot of cars used to get broken into it to parked up at beauty spots um, so yes we did have we did have a fair share of problems poaching of course the rivers dove the dove borders uh, Staffordshire so um, and the river manifold both very good trout fishing rivers or at least they were I even had to go myself at one point but uh, not overly successful the terminus for the manifold light railway as was this is Hume End on the banks of the manifold you can see through the trees on the right now this is one of the camping fields here and it is a it's a it's a veritable floodplain is this one as you can see on the other side there's lots of standing water we've had a lot of rain so we're going to turn right as we cross the manifold and um, the manifold in here on the left now or as it was when I first moved up here in 81 the light railway but as with so many pubs it had to have its name changed we went through this period back in the 80s of places being renamed and in so many ways I wish they wouldn't but it happens so I'm going to turn right here and drop back down to the riverside to run through the valley itself yes we're still recording a lot of these places as we ride down the valley when I was working were great sources of cups of tea up to the left of us in particular I probably drank more tea than, than I was supposed to but it was always made, made to feel very welcome I had a lot of contacts back in the time but, I mean I, here on the left there's all sorts of little remnants of of the copper mining industry this this hill to the left of us is Ecton Hill and it was absolutely riddled with it is riddled with holes shafts and its um, trial shafts trial addits where they dug a short way to try and find the copper ore but uh, not always successfully and uh, through my contacts in the valley I used to gain access into the mine workings and that was incredibly interesting the amount of artifacts we found um, in mines that had been disused since 1900 or thereabouts the track on the right where you just seen the people walking that's uh, that's the old railway track or the track bed I should say sun right in our face at the minute um, <laughs> just along here uh, there was a particular day a Sunday when I found myself coming on duty up there we always worked I always worked on my own and uh, whether it was in for servicing I can't remember I found myself without a vehicle now normally in those situations I'd, I'd get somebody to come up and fetch me and take me down to collect a vehicle but um, nobody available so I said well, what do you want I can't sit on my backside all day in the office a little office so, have you got a bush bike go and do a little bit of a um, little bit of cycle patrol <laughs> I got a push bike yeah but it was a it was a folding rally shopper a shopping bike with a basket on the front and all sorts of okay so I put you know what I mean by a big hat the, the policeman's helmet 
I put my helmet on and set off down the valley because it's a Sunday and there's always a lot of people down here so you know and it's just about here just about here I heard these guys coming from behind us where we are and I knew exactly who they were it was a bunch of lads a bunch of bikers from Stoke and their their big sport was to come down to Hume End take off their helmets and ride through the valley helmetless which was against the law obviously but so I thought I knew they were coming so I chucked my bike in the grass verge and stood in the middle of the road waiting for them and they come round the bend all helmetless and I put my hand up and stopped them and they all stopped amazingly I'm just going to stop here they all stopped and I said right helmets on now I've got to book them all if I wanted to but that wasn't my style Helmets on now. And I'll see you down at Wetter Mill, the tea rooms at Wetter Mill. Okay, okay, yeah, right, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they put their helmets on and headed off down. I'm sure they probably took them off again when they got through the tunnel just in front of us. And uh, I carried on down uh, on my push bike and turned up there. <laughs> and quite a few of them came across and tried to buy me a cup of tea. I didn't pay for my cups of tea at the tea room, so I was a regular visitor there. In fact, it was jokingly referred to as Wetter Mill Police Station because I spent so much time down there. But um, it was, you know, making me presents known, I suppose. And they were a great bunch of lads, and I saw them so often after that and uh, often talking about it. Another little job I had. Um, don't know if anybody remembers an old black and white film called Wicked Lady Margaret Lockwood she was a, a female well, the highway woman I suppose really a female highwayman um, and there was a remake and the stars were Alan Bates and Faye Dunaway and there was a scene they were filming and it was where she'd held up a stagecoach and the stagecoach was on its side and they were filming it here so they closed the road for the filming and they asked the police to provide um, an officer for security and traffic control just in case anybody came past the road close signs and I volunteered that back then I'd volunteer for everything because it, it over time meant money so I volunteered and uh, I duly came down and spent a couple of days down here actually and I, I met Alan Bates and Faye Dunaway bear in mind this was the early 80s in it in all honesty that was the first time I ever met a woman who used profanity shall we say with such ease but that was Wicked Lady and I, I was um, I was part and parcel to the, the remake of, of the film it was never quite up to the same standard as Margaret Lockwood's version but you know it was Wicked Lady let's go a bit further anyway this little area is known as Swainsley Swainsley Bridge, Swainsley Hall up to the left. And it would be wrong to come down here without taking a run through Swainsley Tunnel. I have another story about Swainsley Tunnel, which is not particularly funny. It was in some ways, but it wasn't funny for the the person involved. I was down here as usual. I don't know whether I tell this story or not, but either way, I'm going to tell it again. Be about 1981-82, and I was down here in my Land Rover. In those days, it was a big, green, long wheelbase, six-cylinder Land Rover, and there was a little red 
don't know what it was it's all but samba in front of me brand new X registered it was I remember it ever so well and he came in there weren't the lights in the roof back then that there are now it was pitch black I hit. and this guy in front of me I was following him through his lights didn't come on at all he didn't put his lights on at all and the next thing I saw from the left hand side of the car was a shower of sparks as, he's, as he caught the wall of the tunnel a glancing blow and I thought why hasn't he put his lights on and then the next thing I knew there was a shower of sparks coming through to the right hand side where he bounced off and caught the other side of the tunnel a glancing blow well I followed him through and still his lights didn't come on I followed him through and he pulled up at the other end of the tunnel where we just come from and I went to, to make sure he was okay and to, you know and he was in tears he was actually crying I said, well, why didn't you put your lights on? I said, he said, I've only just had the car and I don't know where the switch is. And I don't know if anybody ever had one of those or remembers them, but they had a twisting stalk. Didn't have a switch on the dashboard as such. He had a twisting stalk. And it was the first time he'd been out in it. He hadn't been out in the dark and he'd not, he'd not acquainted himself with his switch gear. So he panicked and he just couldn't find the switch for his light. I think he probably found the switch after that quite easily, but the damage to both sides of his car, it was quite serious. Brand new car. But anyway, yeah, Swainsley Tunnel. Passing place just here. Thank you. This road we're on at the minute, this was another part of the track bed for the uh, the light railway as it was. It was a narrow gauge railway that ran from um, from Hume End down to Waterhouses on the Leek to Ashbourne Road. Originally put in for uh, the transport of iron ore, of copper ore, sorry, but by the time the railway was built um, about 1905 the, the copper mining had closed down so it was used for agricultural purposes milk that sort of thing and then eventually for tourists but um, the line came up in 39 uh, was never replaced two beautiful little steam engines E.R. Calthrop and J.B. Earl over the way there that's wet and mill tea rooms I'm not going in there today it's too busy but that was uh, as I say that's where I used to spend probably a little bit too much of my time when I was working oh dear we're not going to get through somebody's come adrift I'll turn around and go back down again. It's a beautiful old car coming across there. Austin <laughs> seven four signals the lot lovely right switch off for the journey back up the valley right well having uh, had my plans thwarted 
to run up from Weston Mill up to Butterton. I've come back through the tunnel and we'll take the other route. I want to take you through uh, through Butterton because it's a lovely village. Sorry about that, my battery went flat. Lovely pub in the middle of Butterton, the Black Lion Inn. My God, I've got some stories about this place that I really wouldn't like to repeat. It's a lovely village and it's an interesting village. Interesting layout. And down the bottom here is, um, is the brook. Simply referred to as the brook. And we don't just cross it, we run, a we run through it for a while. It's um, a very slippery ford and it wouldn't be the first person on a solo bike to have um, slid off. Yeah, we run through the brook for a while. Back out the other side and up to Grindon Moor. Right here, there's a farm, and uh, for a few years, a good few years actually, um, it had um, had a change of name. It was actually known as the Andalusian Stud because the gentleman who lived there was a really, really interesting gentleman. Uh, and he ran, um, I can't remember the name of his, his, um, his company now, he was, uh, he was a stunt coordinator, really, really interesting guy. Um, and I used to call on him now and again. Uh, he arranged the the horse riding stunts, the equestrian stunts, in quite a lot of films. One of which is Highlander from the 80s. And if you look on the credits, um, he's actually named in it. But he was involved in in horse riding uh, stunt organising for many many years. And I was visiting once in, in his tax shed. And he said, um, have you ever ridden? And I had done actual fact, I'd ridden a little bit. And uh, he pointed to this whacking great big western saddle, sat over a bench. And he said, just, um, I can't do his accent, he said, throw a leg over that if you like and see what you think. Well, I chucked a leg over this, this western saddle and sat on it. It was like sitting on an iron bar. It was, it was absolutely rock solid. He said, you just, sat on the, you just sat on the saddle that was used by John Wayne in True Grit. And you're joking. And he showed me the provenance. Good Lord. I had an interesting time working up here. I really, really did. So this is Grindon Moor and this is going to take us back to uh, to my village. The Warslow. What a beautiful day though. Now it's not this tree on the left here, on the right sorry, it's not this tree on the right, it's further over. It's a tree very much like this but it was planted as a memorial um, over the way there, it's out of sight. And it's a memorial to the, the crew um, and one or two others that were aboard um, a bomber 
and it was 1947. When I first worked up here, when I first came up here in, in 1981, very often during the winter the talk in the pubs was, well, do you remember the winter of 47? Well, that was nothing compared to the winter of 62 and all this sort of thing, but the winter of 47 was notoriously, notoriously bad. Really, really deep snow. And this, this bomber was, um, was dispatched with supplies. Um, I won't go too deeply into it because it, it's, there's all sorts of side stories to it. But either way, this bomber was deployed to, uh, to do an airdrop to villagers and farmers and uh, came unstuck is uh, I think it was his his port wing his near his, his left wing caught the ground and uh, so yes I fully intend making a, a, a more in-depth video about that ill-fated um, supply drop by the RAF in 1947 tragedy on the right here is a lovely house, lovely big house. What a some more house this is. Because the road we've just come across um, is Grindon Moor. Just checking, it's still recording. It's Grindon Moor. But we turn right onto the... It's not the main road exactly, but we turn right onto this road. And uh, this takes us on to Butterton Moor. T100 is sounding really good at the minute. I call it a T100 because it's, it can't really call it a Bonneville. It is a Bonneville, but I mean, the Bonneville was a 650 that was built in the 60s, 70s, and 80s, 60s, and 70s, and what to the yeah, 80s. Excuse me. Um, this one is uh, a limited edition. It's number 638 of 650 that were built in this colour scheme and what it's all about is this is the colour scheme that was for the 1960 uh, Bonneville, two-tone blue and they produced this one in uh, 2010 as a 50th anniversary and of course there were 650 built because the Bonneville was originally a 650. Now this is Butterton Clues, this hill, this windy hill, it's a lovely set of corners. It's a little bit more interesting with a sidecar outfit, particularly when there's no when there's no passenger in the sidecar. Just uh, gently aviate the sidecar wheel there, just, uh, just for a bit of practice. In the sidecar wheel we call it, uh, we call it flying the chair. It took me a long time to realise, to work out, that um, the sidecar wheel coming off the ground is not the end of the world. It's a different sort of fun, I'm sure I mentioned that. That brings us back into, uh, into my village here at Warslow, but I'm not going straight home. There's a little place I want to visit. Hopefully give them a little bit of custom. We've been there before. Let's go and see if she's open. Oh, the doors are open. The T junction. We've been in before, I think.
Right, I think we'll call it today for this one. And as I said at the start, Happy New Year. Especially to my subscribers. And thank you for your support during the year. Let's see what 24 brings. Cheers. Well, we're back. Got my engine driver's head back, out, back on again. And it was a lovely morning. Was. It's clouded over now and it's going to rain very shortly, but we've come back. And uh, I've given I've given Daisy a bit of a wash off because she got a bit dirty so yeah um, so again happy new year everybody and um, let's see what 2024 brings shall we so have a look through give us a thumbs up subscribe if you haven't already done so and don't forget push that notification bell and it'll let you know when we uh, when my videos are out. See you in the next one. Back in Spain, I think it will be for the next one. But yeah, see you in the next one. Cheers.